the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are allowed to say Amen. I give you the blessing. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even if this is the last thing we could say, we should say it. Uh, we, it's needed as the seal here. Brothers and sisters, today we are called to be disciples and to be the light of the world. A world that brings us together sometimes with fear, bringing darkness of our lives, worrying about health, jobs, stock market. On top of this, we see movements that crush our hearts, such as the changing of the, of the great church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople back into a mosque. And I know some of you think of the prophecies of recent saints of the church related to this and to the end of the world. And we cannot stop from thinking what is it that we do on Great and Holy Friday when the Holy Cross and the body of Christ are brought in the midst of the church at night with us singing, we worship your Crucifixion, O oh Lord, grant us to see your resurrection. We hurt knowing that we are not really, it is not okay for us to kiss the objects, of the holy objects in the church, such as icons and the Holy Cross. But we do this with joy, knowing that we do it for our neighbor out of love and out of obedience. We know that we have a shepherd that is also called good. A shepherd who came to rescue the lost sheep. This shepherd is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. So as we see this shepherd being decapitated in the city of Miami, the statue of the shepherd being decapitated, as we see the Virgin Mary in whatever forms of statues or representations for veneration being desecrated, we add this to the daily pain and stress and fears and concerns. But I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, that you should not let these things take you down. We should be aware of those. We should be actively promoting the efforts that are meant to raise awareness and stop these abuses. And you can add on and on to these with the, um, what is it, not the ethnical, the, uh, uh, the civil unrest because of the people of different colors of their skin and all the abuses that came around that. So with all these, do not let these consume your life. Because if they do, the enemy got you. You ought to be consumed with different things. And the gospel lesson today tells us, be consumed with the idea of being the light of the world. Why? Because as you can see, the world is dark. And there's no other Elias, Elijah, the prophet, the one we celebrate tomorrow, to come with force in the midst of unrepentant people living in sin. No. The Lord has changed that. And instead of Elijah, of Isaiah, it's calling you and me to do that job, to be the light of the world. And to be a light of the world, not at home, in the comfort of your, in our, our rooms and the screens and so on. Yes, we complain. Yes, there are atrocities and people suffering and Christianity is, is cornered, whatever that is. But to be in the world. Today the message has also private and public aspects of the calling. The Lord said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. 
Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. Unavoidable. We are called to be so bright that it will be seen even from the top of the hill. The calling is, as we heard in the gospel reading today, in the epistle reading today, to do good deeds. St. Paul writing to Titus two times reminds him, all right, those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to do good deeds. Let our people learn to apply themselves to good deeds so as to help cases of urgent need and not to be unfruitful. This is an opportunity for us to shine as this little community here in the world by doing good deeds for those who are in need. Do we know anybody who's in need? So many. So many. And we struggle to do this. And we pray for doing this. And we do these things. But the Lord himself gives us a warning here that as we do this, we bring the light into the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Okay, it's okay to see the good deeds. But give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And not give glory to you who do that. The Holy Fathers talk about this as the evil coming in to rob us of what's at stake here. The kingdom, their relationship with God. If these good deeds are reflected into the world and we receive that glory. Oh, Father Yon, thank you for this. Oh, great job. You've done so well. We've, we've rose so, we've we collected so much money. We've fed so many poor. We've, whatever that is. But let that be for the glory of God. So, Here's we have the darkness. We have the great calling of doing the good deeds. The gospel also teaches us today not to stop there. In fact, St. James writes in, writes in, his, um, in his letter that we should be preoccupied with doing all the other things that the law of Christ calls for, the New Testament. He says... Whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty for all. And the Lord today, whoever relaxes one of the least commandments that he talks about in the, in the Sermon on the Mount here, and also teaches men to do so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That means going through the door to perdition in hell. What are these little commandments? Well, you know, right after this passage in chapter 5 of the Gospel of St. Matthew, we're told what they are. The Lord himself illustrates what righteousness is about. Because he tells the disciples and us, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And he talks here about six areas. You remember that. It is written in the old law not to kill, but I tell you, don't, don't get angry. And if you're angry with somebody, don't shoot you there to come to receive communion. Go fix that situation, come back. About marriage, adultery, committing adultery only if we look at something impure, forgiving, and so on. But instead of going through what the Lord himself, himself teaches in the, on the, in the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5, I chose to give you a description of what it means to be the light of the world, to do the good things in the midst of affliction, of evil, of distortion of the world, and unhappiness at a time when there was no internet. This is applied gospel here. From the middle of the second century, second century, is known as the epistle to Diognitus. This is early church and how they struggled to deal with their covids with their emperors with their invasions with those who are killing them and everything else 
and how beautiful they were, the light of the world. Allow me to quote to you chapter 5, called The Manners of the Christians. And read this, what it means for us today. For the Christians are distinguished from other men, neither by country, nor language, nor the customs which they observe. For they neither inhabit cities of their own, nor employ a peculiar form of speech, nor lead a life which is marked out by any singularity. The course of conduct which they follow has not been devised by any speculation or deliberation of inquisitive men, nor do they, like some, proclaim themselves as advocates of any merely human doctrines. But inhabiting Greek as well as barbarian cities, according as the lot of each of them has determined, and following the customs of the natives in respect to clothing, food, and the rest of their ordinary conduct, they display to us their wonderful and confessedly striking method of life. They dwell in their own countries, but simply as sojourners. As citizens, they share in all things with others, yet endure all things as if foreigners. Every foreign land is to them as, a na as their native country, and every land of their birth as the land of strangers. They marry as do others. They beget children, but they do not destroy their offspring. They have a common table, but not a common bed. They are in the flesh, but they do not live after the flesh. They pass their days on earth, but they are citizens of heaven. They obey the prescribed laws, and at the same time surpass the laws by their lives. They love all men and are persecuted by all. They are known and condemned. They are put to death and restored to life. They are poor, yet make many rich. They are in lack of all things, and yet abound in all. They are dishonored, and yet in their very dishonor are glorified. They are evil spoken of, and yet are justified. They are reviled and blessed. They are insulted and repay the insult with honor. They do good, yet are punished as evildoers. When punished, they rejoice as if quickened into life. They are assailed by the Jews as foreigners and are persecuted by the Greeks. Yet, those who hate them are unable to assign any reason for their hatred. So allow me to change here. Brothers and sisters, what great opportunities were given to be luminaries in the world, to shine, to shine as lights of the world, the light of Christ into us. You see them here? Their life back then was not any worse than ours, I mean, not any better than ours today. I would say it was much worse. Yet in these letters and in the scriptures, there's very little said criticism at the government, to the government. There's little said about others except those Christians who came into the church and I needed to be reminded, as we see here in the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the first one, in chapter 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Worry about being righteous, because the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But what? He says here, as such were some of you. So get past that, he says. 
because you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This is who we are. We are some of those who are fallen, who are restored by God, washed, justified, put in place to be the light of the world. And then let the darkness come over. Stay focused on what it means, what it is to be the light of the world. You heard how they responded to persecution, to abuses, to difficulties, how they lived the gospel. So what do we do? We do the good deeds. We feed the poor. We give them money for the glory of God. But there's more than that. Remember, they're all like a link. We cut one, by one link by disobeying the commandments and the whole thing falls down. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. The poor is the one who relies on others' help. The poor in the spirit is the one who relies on the help of God. Patiently, waiting, with great humility. Blessed are the ones who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let us mourn for our sins. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Christ is the meek one. And in his meekness, he had power. And when we are meek as well, we receive power to overcome our passions, our sinfulness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness doesn't stop at civil rights, brothers and sisters. In fact, when movements for the civil rights come in direct conflict with the righteousness of the gospel of God, of Christ, we are to be careful. So we work on hungering and thirsting for the righteousness of of Christ to be filled blessed are the merciful these are the ones who give the alms and also who receive they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart let us work in purifying the heart meaning what keeping away what is impure blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God peacemaker with whom with ourselves, within, within. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the righteous sake. So you see, brothers and sisters, we have so much homework to do here. Let us not turn our wheels on lamenting of the evil in the world. It will never go away until the end when the parousia will come. But rather work in the proper direction of being the light. And that light starts not with the ones who do the evil, but with us from within. And the Lord also says, yes, you are called to be the light. And you know what? You're going to go, you're going to be crucified too. There's no way around the cross in order to be the lights of the world. We have to go through that. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and they sell all kinds of evil things against you falsely for my sake not because you're an evildoer but for my sake so yes here are the blessedness this is the great reward but also go through it for I conquered the world the Lord says all right so much for today what do we take home with us? We ought to be a light in the world. Are you a light in the world? In your family, at work, in the church, wherever you are. Number two, let us not hang our hopes on doing one good thing. That's delusion. If I do one thing right, Glory be to God. 
if it's done for the glory of God. But let us work on all the other things. This is what righteousness is about. Not one thing. It's the broad picture that we put in place of a healthy relationship with God on which we work constantly. Number three, expect the cross. For we are called to be a light where? On the top of the mountain. Now we people live here. We have mountains around us. How many cities have you seen on the top of these mountains? None. Because we don't build cities on the top of the mountain. To build a city on the top of the mountain, to be a light there, to illuminate, it takes labor. It takes great effort. And moreover, the willingness to relocate. The willingness to move from the valley to the top. From the old to the new. From the fallen to the risen. From the fleshly to the spiritual. Without this willingness and the effort, the city will not be visible. will be covered under the bushel. So take, take joy today. It's a message of encouragement and also call to labor in the right direction. And let the ones turn upside down. As long as we are up, growing, we're good. We're, we're headed towards the kingdom, a kingdom that is revealed to us today in this divine service. Amen.